The spread says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, word of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. This place is just trying to tell us that we need the Holy Spirit in our daily life. But when we have the Holy Spirit, it gives us um, a good uh, motive towards doing good things. And the presence of God is always also around. And verse 14 also talks about um, charity. Charity which is love. And if we look at the story of the prodigal, um, the prodigal son, when he came back, the father had to, because of the love, he had to accept him back. So for us to also succeed, we need love in our life. And love also is kind. And I pray that the grace of God for us to love and have the Holy Spirit, God will grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, the scripture this morning is um, from my own perspective is uh, reminding us of where we're coming from, how ungodly we were, how rude we were, how um, our attitudes to one another in the past, which is common among the, the, the hidden world. But God is telling us that we are now God's elect by divine grace. And he's saying to us, even as we have in Romans chapter 6, verse 13, that we should not yield ourselves to this past old life, that because we are now uh, an instrument, we should be an instrument in the hands of God, loving one another, uh, things that we have said bye bye to, we should not visit them again as an elect of God, and uh, we should yield our members as instruments of righteousness unto God, preferring one another, talking about. Um, group work or teamwork as Christians and the Lord will help us even to have a change of mind and be fully in Christ in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to um, dwell on verse 14. And above all these things, put on charity or love, which is a bond of perfectness. In this particular verse of verse 14, there are two parts that I see there. The first is love. There are various kinds of love as we know. There's errors, love, there's failure, and there's agape. The love that is emphasized here that we should put on is agape, sacrificial love. The good kind of love, which when, even when someone hurts you, or they do anything wrong against you, you must still love them. That's the kind of love that is being spoken about here. And that's what God manifested to us. Because the Bible says in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and come short of God's glory. We did not deserve all the things God did for us, but because of the love that he had for us, the agape love, that's why he sends the best gift he ever had. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that is the kind of love God expects us also to have. In 1 John 4, 19, it says, We love him because he first loved us. That is, that is the love that God expects us to have if we want to be like Christ, which is what Colossians 3 um, Fourteen is saying, and in part B of that um, of that verse, verse fourteen, it says, um, "Which is the bond of perfectness." This kind of love is um, is the bond of perfectness. 
And that's why in Matthew 5, 14, Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And if we could look further, or, or study, or research further, we will see that the Greek translation of perfect means complete. And the one in Colossians 3, 14 of perfectness, the Greek translation is completeness. And because God is perfect, He desires that we also be perfect as well. But without love, we cannot be we cannot be like that. So it is only through agape love we can achieve completeness or full maturity in Christ. My prayer this morning is that God will give us the grace to have this agape love Amen. so that we'll be complete in Him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Verse 6. Um, this morning the Lord has placed before us life and death, blessings and curses. So as a child of God, we have to know the paths that we must fix ourselves into. As a child of obedience, we must be intentional about our living and we must know that we are elected and not ordinary um, elected. We are called to be the beloved son of God. So when you are called the beloved son of God, then you have to be deliberate about your salvation. You have to be intentional about your living. You have to live a holy life. You have to live a righteous life. The word of God must be, you know, your guide. And I pray this morning that the Lord will give us the grace to be intentional about our living, living in righteousness and in holiness, and to know the exact call that we are called to and not into sin, but into righteousness and into the light of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Daddy has been teaching us. Daddy has taken this place over and over. And also in the school of disciples, we have this place there. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8, 10, 12, and 14. Say, but now ye also put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, feed the communications out of your mouth. He didn't say God will help you to take put it off. He said you put it off. Verse 10. And have and have put you must put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowel of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Verse 14. And above all these things, put on charity. Uh, this place is telling us that Christianity is a complete turnaround. And until this is done, we are only deceiving ourselves. We are only deceiving ourselves. Second Corinthians five seventeen says, "Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things must become new." Equally, Philippians two twelve to thirteen says, "We are for my beloved, as he have also been not as in my absence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling." For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So, when God has given us the grace to be saved, we must labor on ourselves to be sanctified, separated for Jesus Christ. Uh, Joshua said, any other person can serve any other God, but for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. The grace to be able to have this commitment may God grant unto us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, okay. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are looking at Colossians chapter three from verse 5 to 17. Colossians 3, 5 to 17. And um, 
Yes, a lot of what I would have said have been said by others, but maybe I just summarize it all. There are two principal forces operating on earth. Forces of darkness and forces of light. Interestingly, darkness came first before light. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5. Genesis 1, 1 to 5. When God created the heaven and the earth, darkness covers the whole earth. On God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now these two forces, darkness and light, give birth to causes and blessings. Death and life. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, God said, I'm calling heaven to bear witness that I've asked you to choose and place him before you causes and blessings, death and life. You choose. I then gave the advice. Choose life that we might live, which is also say, choose light. Um, John chapter 1, John verse 4, John 1, John verse 4, 1 to, uh, from verse 4 to 5, the Bible made it clear that uh, in Jesus Christ was life. And that life was the light of men. So you see, life and light, they go together. Then they went on to say in verse 5 that the light shines in darkness, and darkness created is not all. Darkness cannot overcome it. So you see these two forces always uh, playing or waging war one against the other. These two forces also will result in either reward or punishment. Reward coming from light, punishment coming from darkness. As we read in Matthew 25, from verse 31 to 46, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, on the day of judgment, the day of separation, a word for those who have done the will of God, a punishment for the people who choose to disobey God or to ignore their fellow brethren that they could have helped. <clears throat> now, darkness in this passage, with all its uh, attributes, have been called the old man. Like I told you, darkness comes first. So he's the older one of the two. And the attributes of uh, this uh, old man have been listed for us in Colossians chapter 3, from verse 8 to 9. Colossians 3, 8 to 9. All the things that you do when you were in the old man, before you were born again. And then the attributes of the new man representing light is listed in Colossians 3 from verse 10 to 14. Colossians 3, 10 to 14. And then like somebody pointed out, we have a responsibility. For example, in that Colossian chapter 3, verse 5, Colossian 3, verse 5, he said, you mortify, mortify means put to death. 
your members that are in the world. Those things that are contrary to the will of God, mortify. For example, in Matthew chapter 5, from verse 29 to 30, Matthew 5, 29 to 30, Jesus gave an advice. Your very best friend gave you an advice. If your eye will cause you to offend, block it out. And today say, cry to your father in heaven and say, hey, this eye is causing me to offend. Uh, help me deal with it. It's the one, you are the one to block it out. If your right hand is causing you to offend, cut it off. And it didn't ask you to call on the pastor to come and help you pray. You are to do the work yourself. We have a responsibility. Any faith that puts everything on God, any faith that says, I've got born again now, there's nothing more for you to do, everything will be handled by God, is an irresponsible faith. You have a responsibility. Like someone said, if you are in Christ, all things are to become new. When you are in Christ, His blood cleanses you from all sins in the past. Every sin you have committed up to the moment you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ are washed away. Everything you can make, all things passed away. But what you do from then on is very crucial. So when you hear people who say, once you are born again, you can live any kind of life you want. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, recruiting disciples for Satan. No doubt about it. It is by the grace of God that we are saved. But the word of God made it abundantly clear. You cannot continue in sin and expect grace to abound. And say, God forbid. That's the strongest way of God saying, no way. How will I be able to put off the old man? Before, because if you don't put off the old, you can't put on the new. If you try to put the new upon the old, you create a crisis. Jesus Christ said it. You put new wine in old bottle, the old bottle will break and the wine will, will, go, will go to waste. You need assistance. That assistance is already provided. Philippians 4, verse 13. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? Christ is ready to provide you with the strength. I've said it before. I'm saying it again. If you cry to the Almighty God and say, God, I am hungry. And there is yam in the house. There is firewood behind your house. You have a box of matches. And you sit down and come to the uh, chapel and begin to cry unto God, Almighty God, 
I am your son. Why will you allow me to die of hunger? The Almighty God will just sit down in heaven and be waiting for you to die of starvation so you can come and join the angels to sing. Why? Because there is yam, there is wood, there is fire. The rest is your own. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He will prepare the table. He won't put the food in your mouth. He will do his own part. You must do your own part. If there's any prayer you should pray at all this morning, is that you will say, God, wake me up. Let me stop deceiving myself. There are some prayers you pray that are completely unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Christ is already in you when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. The strength to live holy is already in you. If you don't live holy, it's because you don't want to. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. So, the grace to wake up and stop being lazy and continue to do what God says you should do. May God grant it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.